and fifth x, and then difference is 76. Then we go through and solve this equation. Well, we see a fraction in the equation. To clear the fraction, we uh, identify the common denominator 5 and multiply throughout by it. So it would be 5 times x, then minus 5 times 1 fifth x, and then 5 times 76. The fives go out here as expected, and away we go. We have 5x minus x. 5 times 76 is 380, so the equation looks like this. 5x minus x is 4x. Divide by 4 on both sides, and we find x to be 95. Now, the tendency when you, you get a value for a letter in a, in a word problem is to say, okay, I've, I've gotten my answer. Let's go on to the next problem. But it's really important for us to make sure that we have answered the question posed in the problem. Now, in this problem, we're asked to find two numbers. We have found only one of them. So we, we need to go through and find the other number. Now, back, back here, we represented the two numbers. We said, let x be this thing called another number. But the other number uh, in this problem is 1 fifth x. Now, that's the value. It's one of the values in, in writing this label for the things that we're looking for. You see, we have a mathematical representation of that other number that we're after, and so we can use that representation uh, in order to calculate it. So one fifth x means one fifth of 95. So one fifth, this one fifth x business means one fifth of 95, and that turns out to be 19. So the two numbers are 95 and 19. But is, are these the only two numbers that, that will meet the requirements imposed in this problem? Well, let's see. Back over here, when I wrote the equation to begin with, I just began with x, and I subtracted 1 fifth x. Now, why did I take the difference that way? Well, I might have reasoned that, gee, that's the larger number. If this is 1 fifth of x, then this must be the larger of the two numbers. Well, that's, that's true if I'm talking about positive integers, but am I restricted to that? No, not necessarily. So what would have happened? if I had taken one-fifth x, you see, and written it first, and then subtracted x. Well, it would have turned out that in this whole process, I would have found x to be negative 95. I would have found one-fifth x to be negative 19. And it does turn out that the difference between negative 19 and negative 95 is the 76 that we were talking about here. So there is another pair of numbers that, that would meet the requirements here and allow us to get another solution. Now, sometimes you are asked to find the positive values and sometimes negative ones and sometimes all of the answers that, that meet the requirements, but it's important to kind of think in a lot of different areas to cover all of the possible bases here. Let's take a look at a distance problem. A plane is flying from Orlando to Denver, a distance of about 1,950 miles. After one hour and 15 minutes, the plane flies over a town that is 600 miles from Orlando. How long will it take the plane to fly from Orlando to Denver? Assume that the plane flies at a constant speed during the entire flight. In searching for an overall equation to solve distance problems, we a lot of times will build a table of information. And that's particularly the case when we have either two vehicles or two directions of travel or, as in this case, two parts to a trip. Now, our fundamental idea is based on the notion that distance is equal to weight times time. But this problem isn't as simple as that because there would be two distances and weights and times, one for each part of the trip. So to try to put all of it together, we make a table of information. Now, the table of information involves either the two parts to the trip, as we have here, or two vehicles, or the two directions of travel might fall into the two categories here. And then we want to just put the information that we have concerning distance, rate, and time. And we fill the chart, and then we're looking for some general kind of idea of equality. Now, I've written up here the total distance is 1,950 miles. Now, that's a, an amount that just doesn't kind of fit into uh, our overall chart. So we have all the information from the problem right here. Now, when we're looking for a condition of equality, like... Um, 
distance equals distance, time equals time, maybe rate equals rate, or maybe a total distance idea upon which we can build an equation. And a lot of times there are several right ways to work the problem. All right, on this one, it turns out that the, the weight of this airplane is the same in both parts of the trip. So these two rates are equal to one another, and that's going to be the overall basis of our equation for solution. Now let's try to represent other, other ideas or other items in our chart. We don't need to represent rates. The rates are equal to one another. We don't know what the rate is, but we're not looking for it either. It's just a, an idea of equality that will allow us to build an equation. Okay, what about the distance in part two? If the total distance in the trip is 1,950 miles and the distance in part one is 600 miles, then the difference would be the distance in part two. So we take 600 from 1950, we get 1,350. Now, do you notice that over here for time, the time was given in the problem as one hour and 15 minutes, and uh, I have uh, listed that as 1.25 uh, in decimal form, just for calculation purposes. Now, the time for the, this part of the trip is unknown to us. We could let that time be, oh, let's say, t. Now we have a way of building an overall equation. Now, and, and the, the equation is, is built like this. It's the rate in part one of the trip is equal to the rate in part two of the trip. But rate is distance divided by time. Now, how do we know that? Oh, we know that from this. We know distance is rate times time, and if I divide on both sides by t, then distance divided by time is equal to rate. There's a little relationship in our general idea of the distance formula. All right, so if rate is distance divided by time, then this rate is some distance divided by time, and this is some distance divided by time. And these are just the two parts of the trip. All right, for the first part of the trip, we have, let's see, a distance of 600 and a time of 1.25. And for the second part of the trip, we have a distance of 1350 and a time of t. And now, since we have a proportion involved, we can cross multiply to clear the fractions, and away we go. Right, going this way, we have 600t. Going this way, we have 1.25 times 1350. So we move up here, multiplying over here, we get this amount, dividing on both sides by 600, we find t to be this many hours. Now, this many hours. Hmm. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'd like to write this in hours and minutes. This turns out to be, well, let's see. Wait a second. Are we answering the question posed in the problem? Uh, well, we may be need to backtrack on the tape. We, we thought a little while ago that we need to read about or, or uh, consider actively what we're looking for. Is this what we're looking for? Is it the time in the second part of the trip? No, it turns out that this is not the, what we're looking for in the problem. It's the total amount of time. Well, for the total amount of time, we take this time in the second part of the trip, and we add, add the time in the first part of the trip, which was 1.25 hours, and now we have something to deal with. Let's see, we have, ah, 4.0625. So that's our total amount of time in hours. Does this make sense? Well, usually we don't think of, of time like this. We think more like four hours and some number of minutes. Well, it turns out that 0.0625 is 3.75 minutes. So the total amount of time for the trip is 4 hours and 3.75 minutes. Here's another problem involving distance, rate, and time. A freight train travels 100 miles in the same time that an express train travels 150 miles. If the express goes 20 miles per hour faster than the freight, find the rate of each. The first thing we might look for is some statement of equality. And you see one here in the first sentence. It says, in the same time. And that's going to be an important matter when we begin to build our equation for a solution. Let's outline our information. It says the freight goes 100 miles. The express goes 150 miles. The two trains are traveling in the same time. The express train goes 20 miles per hour faster than the freight. And we're asked to find the rates of the two trains. 
Let's build a table of information. Now notice here we have 